templates. I mean, it's already in the name, standard template library. To understand everything that's in the STL, you need to understand templates. Let's start. Hi everyone, I decided to explain the standard template library. Over this course, we will start from the ground up and cover the complete STL. This is containers, algorithms, functions, and also iterators. I'll try to do two videos a week, but hey, life happens, right? So if this is interesting to you, stay tuned and please subscribe. Today we will be covering templates. Templates are essential for the standard template library. They are also called compile time polymorphism or static polymorphism. So it's a little bit fancy wording for us being lazy. In reality, it really just means that we want to use the same thing differently and don't want to write the same stuff twice. But let me just show you. So consider this little program that we have here. We have number one and the number two, both are integers and we want to sum them up to get the number three. So we need to write the sum function and the sum function will probably look something like this. You have an int, uh, returned by the sum function and you have two parameters number one and number two and then you return both of these numbers as a sum then let's go to the console and here we can just compile this program by using the clan compiler and outputting it to main and we can then run the main program and we see that the number three so the sum of both of these numbers is However, now consider that you have two different numbers, so not integers, but doubles. So you can have two numbers like double, double one equals 10.0 and double, double two equals 20.0. And in this case, you also want to calculate the sum of bo both of these numbers. So you have a third one, which is called now double three. And this one equals sum of double one and of double two, right? Uh, now this function here is undefined because we just have a function that takes integer arguments. So what we need to do to do that is to define the same function, basically completely the same function, just with doubles as, in, uh, as parameters. And as programmers, we are naturally lazy, so we obviously don't want to do that. And here is where templates come into play. So we can define a function template, which is basically a blueprint for all of these functions, and the compiler then does the right thing. Let me show you. We will now write a new function, which is doing the same as both of these functions. So we have two different keywords, new keywords. We need the keyword template to tell the compiler that we are not defining a function, but a template function. And the second keyword is type name. Type name says that the compiler should treat whatever we give the type name as a name inside the next template function as a regular type so as something like int or something like a class or uh, basically just to treat it as a real type and in this case we say we want to have a type name named scalar so anything that might be a scalar and then we define the function now the function should not return an int or a double but it should return a scalar so we type as a return type scalar and because we said that we scalar here is a type name the compiler realizes that this one here is a type name as well so it realizes that we are returning whatever the template has been expanded to so we use the same interface so we also call the function sum and then we pass two arguments of type scalar so we say scalar1 and scalar2 scalar and then we define the same thing bas uh, basically again so we return scalar1 plus scalar2 and 
restyle it a little bit. Now the compiler has a bunch of different sum functions. So for any possible type scalar, the compiler is able to instantiate a sum function, which is using the respective type. And this is something that is called template expansion. So during compile time, if the compiler realizes that a sum function is needed with, for instance, an integer type or with a double type, the compiler will automatically um, expand this template with the specific type. This means that we can get rid of all of these double definitions. We just delete them and then we compile the program and see what happens. Compilation with templates usually takes a little bit longer because the compiler needs to do all the extra work. It did compile and we can output it and we see, okay, it's just number three that we did output. We can also output the double here and uh, recompile shortly and then also see that it works for double as well. And the good thing here is that we just defined a single sum function. So if the scalar has an operator plus and this operator plus is well defined, then this sum function will work for any type scalar that we will pass. This basically means that we have now written all of the different sum functions together for any possible type. We have now covered function templates, but there is a second type of template as well. And these are the class templates. So a class can also be templated and then the type name that is defined in the template can be reused inside the class. Let's walk through this very, very short implementation. So we have a class which is a point and the point usually has two coordinates, which is an X and the Y coordinate. And it additionally has a print function, which prints then the X or the Y coordinate. And here we can say that we can have points of a different type. So probably points which have integer coordinates or points which have double coordinates. So we basically have the same thing as with the function as well. We have now a template with a type name scalar and then we reuse scalar inside of our class to define the interfaces and also to define the member variables of this class. And the implementation itself, so here this is the definition of the constructor and to now implement this constructor, we also need to tell the compiler by using template type name scalar that the compiler is also doing all of these functions for all of the different types of scalar that are possible. The printing itself is quite straightforward. We just print the X value, the Y value, and then an empty one just to see which type has been instantiated for the template. The main itself is also pretty self-explanatory. So we create a point with coordinate type double and we create a point with coordinates type int and we just fill them here with different things and then print out where the coordinates of these points are. So let's go to the console and let's compile that one. So we use now here the class template, output it also to the main, and then we can run it. And here we see that the coordinates one and two, they fit whatever we have put into. And the great thing here now about this debugging library ice cream is that we also see the context in which these functions have been created. So for instance, we see that in line 23, we have the print function. And in this case, the scalar type of this print function, which has been used is double, which means that the compiler figured out that because this point here is a double, it needs to call the double print function. And in the second case, the scalar is int, and the compiler automatically calls the right function to also use this integer. There's a lot more to say about templates, but this covers now the basics. If you know this, you are prepared for everything else that follows in the course. If you look forward to more of the videos about the standard template library, then please subscribe 
and if you like the content also please hit like. So as always check out the code from github, get started and enjoy coding.